Hi children, welcome back to Lakshmi study room. Today I am going to teach AP State Board new syllabus for 8th class that is biology. So this biology textbook contains total 7 chapters. The first chapter is cell structure and functions and second chapter is microorganisms, friend and foie. Chapter 3 crop production and management. Chapter 4 reproduction in animals chapter 5 reaching the age of adolescence chapter 6 conservation of plants and animals chapter 7 pollution of air and water so in this textbook we have a seven chapters so now i am going to teach chapter 1 that is cell structure and functions so cell is the basic structural and functional unit of any living organism. So that's why we start biology from 8th class also. So we are starting the lesson from cell also. So we, ha we have already learned that uh, the things around us are either living or non-living. So what's the difference between living things and non-living things? Living things have a they, they have to perform some basic functions like digestion, respiration, excretion, reproduction. So all these functions are carried out by living things. But non-living things cannot perform all these functions. So but how can these living organisms perform all these functions? with the help of some organs. So living things have a or living organisms have a different organs to perform different functions. So in this chapter you shall learn about the basic structural unit of an organ which is the cell. So any organ is formed by the cell. So the basic and structural unit of the organ is cell. So cells may be compared to bricks in this lesson. So bricks are helps will help bricks are used in the building material for construction. Similarly, cells are assembled to make the body of every organism. So all the cells together to form as a organism. For example, cell. So a group of cells will form as a organ so group of cells will be called as a tissue so what is tissue so tissue is a group of cells which have a similar structure and they perform similar function so tissue will be formed as a organ so organs constitute to form as a organ system so organ systems assemble the or organ systems together to be formed as a organism so if any organism form in these steps because every organism started their life from the single cell only. After more divisions of the cells, the organism will be formed like this only. Okay. So first, who discovered the cell? So Robert Hooke in 1665 observed slices of cork under a simple magnifying device. In 1665, we don't have any well magnifying devices like uh, microscopes so, then robert took have only simple magnifying lens so with the help of this lens he took a cork is he took cork from the bark of a oak tree and uh, he took thin slices of the cork and observed under the microscope he noticed uh, partitioned boxes or compartments in the cork slice so every these boxes appear like a honeycomb that means these boxes looks like a honeycomb have so many chambers so he also noticed that one box was separated from the other by a wall or partition hook coined the term cell for each box he gave the term he coined the term cell for each box what a hook observed as a box or cell in the cork were actually dead cells because he took Mm, cork from the dead cells only. So he observed only dead cells. But cells of the living organisms could be observed only after the discovery of improved microscope. Nowadays we have so many 
improved microscopes with the help of microscope we can observe the cells clearly and not only observing the cells and the cell organs present inside the cell we can tell that their functions are also but further timely very little was known about the cell for the next 150 year after robert hooks observation today we know a lot about structures and its functions because of improved microscopes having high magnification so nowadays microscopes have a high magnification with the help of magnification we can see the structure of the cell very clearly so the cell both bricks in a building cells in the living organism are basic structural units for example so with the help of bricks we can construct a wall so with the help of walls they can construct the building similarly with the help of the cells are the cells are formed as a on organism so cells will be called as a basic and structural unit of the organism so the buildings though built of similar bricks have a different designs shapes and sizes so bricks have a different shapes and designs and sizes similarly cells living world organisms have also different from one differ from one other but all are made up of cells so cells in the living organisms are complex living structures are like non living bricks bricks are very bricks have bricks are actually bricks are non living things so they don't have a very complex structures but cells have a complex structures because they have a so many cell organs are present inside the cell and they have to perform different functions see here one question is given here so a hens egg can be seen easily is it a cell or a group of cell so hens egg, egg is a cell it is a cell we can see uh, with the naked eye it is big enough to be seen by the naked eye see here one picture is given it is a brick wall and it is a onion peel so cell bricks are arranged in a particular manner and uh, with the help of bricks we can construct a wall and onion peel will be formed with the help of a cell only so each and every organism is uh, is formed by the cells only so cells are the structural and functional unit of the organism so why cell will be called as a structural and functional unit of the organism because all living organisms are made up of cells and all the basic functions of an organism occur in the cell so a group of cells to form a tissue to perform specific function so different tissues combine to form an organ and different organs together to form an organ system which ultimately form an organism so so as bricks are put together to construct a building similarly the body of living organism is also made up of cells so from this we can say that cell is the structural and functional unit of any living organism so organisms show variety in the cell number and shape and size okay so each and every organism have a different to cell number so how do scientists observe and study the living cells they use microscopes which magnifying the opposite and stains are used to color the parts of the cells to study the detailed structure so if you want to observe the cell structure of the cell we can use the microscope but if you want to observe the cell organelles with the help of some stains or dyes are used to color the parts of the cell to study the detailed structure of the cell for example if we want to observe the nucleus we have to use methylene blue if you want to observe the mitochondria we have to use jones green b so for these stains are used to identify the structure of those cell organelles there are millions of the living organisms they are of different shapes and sizes their organs are also vary in the shape size and number of cells let us study about some of them so number of cells can you guess the number of cells in a tall tree or in a huge animal like the elephant the number runs into billions and trillions human body has a trillions of the cells which vary in the shapes and sizes 
so different groups of the cells perform a variety of the functions so here billion is a thousand million a trillion is a thousand billion so the number of cells perform different functions so organisms made of more than one cell are called as a multicellular organisms multi means many cellular means cell so the number of cells being in less in number organisms does not in any way affect the function of the organisms you will be surprised to know that an organism with billions of the cells begins life as a single cell which is the fertilized egg the fertilized egg cell multiplies and the number of cells increases as the development proceeds so here each even the human beings and elephants have a billions and trillions of the cells but of course the life will be started or begin as a from a single cell only so which is a fertilized egg after being divided divided and multiple times and forms a mass of cells so these mass of cells will be group together to form as a tissue and different tissues combine to form an organ and different organs together to form an organ system so which ultimately form an organism so it will take some time to form from the cell to organism in human beings it will take for 9 months so this period of time will be called as a gestation period okay so look at the following figures both organisms are made up of a single cell single celled organisms are called as a unicellular organisms uni means one cellular means cell and in your uh, textbook here from these two points we can uh, write the difference between the multicellular and unicellular organisms so multicellular organism they have a more than two cells those organisms will be called as a multicellular organisms from sponges to mammals they have a multi cells multicellular organisms but organisms are made up of a single cell those organisms will be called as a unicellular so for ex example for unicellular or here see this picture amoeba and parmesium okay so amoeba and parmesium a single celled organism perform all the necessary function that multiple organism perform so how multicellular organism for perform some basic functions like digestion respiration circulation and excretion similarly the single celled organisms like amoeba it captures the food and digest the food respires excrete grows and reproduce so similar function multicellular organisms are carried out by groups of specialized cells forming different tissues tissues in turn form organs but uh, amoeba is a single cellular organism it can perform within the cell only all these basic functions within the cell only so the teacher may shows a permanent slide of amoeba and paramecium under microscope so alternatively the teacher can collect the pond water and shows these organisms by preparing the slides so if you want to observe the uh, amoeba and paramecium lively so we have to collect the pond water and observe the paramecium very clearly in the pond water okay so shape of the cell refer to how do you define the shape of the amoeba in the figure so you may say that shape appears irregular in fact amoeba has no definite shape unlike other organisms so amoeba don't have a proper shape it keeps on changing its shape observe the projections of the varying lens protruding out of its body so these are called as a pseudopodia pseudo means false podia means feet that means amoeba has a false feet we have a feet they are those are permanent feet they don't have, they don't change the shape but amoeba is not like that amoeba always changes its shape unlike other organisms so it can form their feet according to their need like locomotion or feeding or grab the food or movement okay 
So these projections appear and disappear as amoeba moves or fades. And what advantages does amoeba derive by changing its shape? So amoeba always changes its shape. And what is the advantage of this uh, changes? See, amoeba forms pseudopodia. That means false feet which can change its shape always. So pseudopodia of amoeba are helpful in its locomotion that means move from one place to another place and second one is a capturing food that means the amoeba movement pseudopodia helps in locomotion and capturing the food. So a change in the shape is due to the formation of pseudopodia which facilitate movement and help in capturing the food also. So in our body, a white blood cells in human blood is another example of a single cell. So it, it can also change its shape like amoeba. But while WBC is a cell, but amoeba is a full-fledged organism capable of independent existence. So amoeba is a organism, but WBC is a cell. So what shape would you expect in organisms with millions of the cells? Show different cells such as a blood, muscle and nerve of human beings. The different shapes are related to their specific function. Generally cells are round, spherical and are elongated. So these are round, spherical and elongated and branched also. So some cells are long and pointed at both ends. So this one, see, these cells are long and pointed at both ends. And exhibit a spindle shape. So this, uh, the shape of these cells will be called as a spindle shape, okay? So cells sometimes are quite long. Some are branched like nerve cells. So this one is a branch like a nerve cells. So the main function of nerve cell is it receives and transfers the message thereby, okay? So helping to control and coordinate the working of different parts of the body. Can you guess which part of the cell give its shape? So components of the cell are enclosed in a membrane. So this membrane provides shape to the cell or free plant or animals. That is cell wall. So cell wall is an additional covering over the cell membrane in plants. It gives shape and rigidity to the cells. So bacteria cells also have a cell wall. Okay, so all the uh, cell organelles are enclosed by a cell membrane. See, for example, it one is a cell. So this one is a animal cell, this one is a plant cell. So cell is enclosed by a cell membrane. So this part will be called as a cell membrane. It is also cell membrane. So cell membrane give proper shape and size to the cell and uh, in plant cells uh, the another additional layer it is a cell mem cell wall so cell wall is surrounded by a cell membrane so the cell wall give shape and shape size it will decide the shape and strength to the cell and it will it will also provide rigidity to the cell and we will discuss in the next video okay thank you for watching this video Please like my video, share my videos to your friends and subscribe my channel and click on the bell icon.